What's happening, Fish and Friends? Today we're taking a look at the new Lunker Stick Rods from Monster Bass. As always, I'll give you an up-close look at these rods and take you through all the features. I'll compare this rod to some similar rods on the market, and I'll kind of take you through what my final thoughts on this rod are. So enough yapping, let's take a closer look. Starting with uh, some of the features on this. So right out the gate, it does come with a 30 ton Torre carbon blank. It does also have the nice Fuji titanium tangle free K guides with the sick inserts and kind of the difference between sick and what you see normally on a lot of the rods around kind of that hundred dollar price point is they've got alkanite or aluminum oxide rings. Now the sick rings are going to be a little bit harder, a little bit smoother. Some say it's not as much of a trade off because the alkanite guides are a little bit tougher, but these are a little bit higher class. Either way you look at it, these are very good inserts and what kind of gets overlooked is uh, those titanium guides. And I've heard a lot of like the saltwater guides or if you're fishing a lot of brick with a lot of sediment on there. The sick inserts are harder, so they're not as uh, opt to actually wear like a groove in it from the line running over it. As we move down the rod, they do have everything kind of in that black and orange motif. I like that. Orange is one of my favorite colors. And on the back of it here, they do have the specification. So I got the 74 medium heavy, moderate fast, again, rated for lures up to an ounce. How universal is that? As we move down, it's got the wire hook keeper here. And this is a good one because, you know, if you've got a Texas rig, let me see. Something like this, a Texas rig or an EWG, you know, style thing like this. If you've got it rigged, you can just hook it off there. So if you're, you know, throwing a frog and you need to follow up real quick, you can take this off uh, and throw it in. But it does have a big enough gap inside there. So if you want to take your hook and actually hook it inside there, you can do that. So you kind of get the best of both worlds. Again, I don't know that there's like a perfect lure keeper for me. Um, I think each one kind of has its own pros and cons. One thing that I do love is when we get to the real nut here, um, you know, I'm a big fan of laying my finger over over this spot when I'm actually feeling my line. Um, I love that that's a nice smooth uh, cap there. This does come with the Fuji ECS graphite reel seat. Um, and I kind of like this one because it's got like this rubbery feel to it. And I don't know if this is the final one, uh, if this is actually a Fuji or not, but whatever this one has, it's got a good like kind of grippy almost coating on it. If I put this on here, this is the Crado DC. You can kind of see how it is in hand. That's what we're looking at there. So I do like that this is thin right here, this spot and kind of flares out. You can see how it kind of flares just a little bit here. I like that because my fingers kind of sit under it and it gives me enough room there. So in hand, um, that was the first thing I noticed when I put a reel on it, it's good and comfortable. And again, a rod has to be good and comfortable when you get the reel on it or chances are uh, you're probably not gonna wanna fish it. Again, kind of keeping that black and orange all the way throughout. This one has uh, EVA foam grips on it, but these are gonna be changed out when they actually go into production. This is one of the, the test models, so it's got this black EVA, but that will be updated to a 3A Portuguese cork, I think they call it. And then on the back, they're also changing this. So the one thing that I do like that I think is cool is they have this indicator on back and the lower the number is, the lighter power uh, and the slower action it is. So it goes with like a medium light fast and then to a medium moderate fast and then to a medium fast and then media heavy, so on and so forth. So the lighter power, slower the action, uh, the lower the number is gonna be. So it's like M1, M2, M3, I think there's nine different rods. Um, and they said on the final production, Rick said that they're actually gonna put like kind of what it's for. I don't know if this is gonna say like moving baits or chatter bait type thing, you know, something like that. I don't know some people don't like the technique specific being on there. It's like the company is trying to market you buy like 15 different rods. Um, I actually like it. There's a few companies like Kistler, um, Cash, and a few of them that list like what they would recommend the rod for. Dobbins is another one. Um, when you go to the page, it kind of lists what the rod is for. So I think it's just to kind of help people putting that on there. I guess it really just depends on how you look at it. But I think it's cool to kind of give people recommendations if they're uh, confused. How does this rod compare to some of the other similar rods on the market? Well, let's start out by getting a weight on this. I have not weighed it. So this will be the first that I know. All right, I had to make sure we were not touching anything. 4.3 ounces, so it's not touching the carpet back there. It is free over here. It wants to kind of roll around, but 4.3 I think is what we end up on. Okay, so how does that compare to the Dobbins Champion? I don't know what this one weighs. I had somebody ask me. That's why I'm weighing this one. So pretty dang close, and the Champion is a darn good rod. That's like a 200, like $20 rod, I think. 4.6 ounces, which is respectable. And any 4-ish four, four ounce rod, I mean, you're not going to be able to tell the difference between 4.3 and 4.6. So the Dobbins Champion was a 704, so a seven foot four power. This is the six cents sensory. I forgot I had this route, but I noticed it's a seven four extra heavy. And just to kind of see where this one weighs out. And that one comes in just a little bit heavier at five ounces. Okay, so less than both of those, but weight doesn't mean a whole lot if uh, it doesn't feel good in hand. This is what it looks like in hand with a reel that a lot of us are familiar with, the Lose LFS $99 reel, one of the best $99 reels I think you can get. 
in hand, man, it's got a good grip on it. I also had the Corrado uh, DC on there, a 150 size reel. I think 100 size reel feels really good on here. Um, I think once you get a little bit bigger, might not be as comfortable. I don't know, really depends on the reel, but with both of these has a good solid purchase on it. Uh, that's kind of how my hand fits around it. Now the other thing I wanted to show you was how the actual taper or action of this rod works. So first off, I'm gonna show you the, I think, $80 Lose Xfinity Rod. And this is the one that they edited or uh, labeled as a seven foot to medium heavy extra fast rated for lures up to two ounces. I feel like this is wrong. And I think in my test, you can kind of see here, I put a pair of uh, vice grip pliers on there. Those are just short of a pound and look at the action of that rod. Now those vice grip pliers, I think are 15 and a half ounces. So just shy of a pound, 16 ounces to a pound just shy of a pound. Now, as we get the Monster Bass on here, a seven foot four, medium heavy, moderate fast, you can see the difference in where that bend goes down to. So the exact same weight on, the exact same reel with braid, um, you can see where that rod bends right down to. And kind of for me, a fast action rod is the first third of it bends. Um, this does bend down a little farther into that. I would say maybe into the like more than more than what I would think of as a fast action. It really does bend down into it, especially when you put um, like a pound weight on there. You can see what that really gets down to. Now, finally, I used one of my favorite rods, the Daiwa Aerodex seven foot medium. And like I said, this thing runs a little soft and you can really see here how I actually had to move the, uh, the vice grip pliers up a little bit because it bent all the way down to the ground. So you can see um, when people explain power, uh, the same weight on each one of these rods, and you can see how it's impact the bend into it. Uh, so the power is how much power or force weight it actually takes to put a bend into that rod. And then when you get into the action of it, it's how far down the rod that actual bend goes. So the faster a rod is, the faster the tip is gonna bend and get down into the back. Okay, so what are my final thoughts on this rod? Well, you know, starting out, I really like that they did all the different types of actions and powers on this. So, you know, ranging from the smallest with that little indicator, you know, as it goes up to the, you know, heavier uh, and faster rods. I like that they've done that. You know, I'm a big fan of having softer rods for some things, you know, kind of a faster tip or, you know, action for other things. Um, so for example, like this one, the 7.4, medium heavy, moderate fast, I'm gonna use for a lot of my moving hook, single baits. So spinner baits, chatter baits, swim jigs. I like to have a little bit softer tip as I'm working that lure through, you know, if it's over wood or in grass, that fish grabs it for just a second before, you know, I get just a little bit of a delay in that rod before I'm setting the hook. So it's not like an extra fast, you know, where I just feel that dink and I'm potentially pulling it out of their mouth. Um, I like having a little bit slow rod so they actually get it and get a hold of it before it starts to bend into it. Another big pro for me is they used good components on it. So like I talked about, it's got titanium guides with the sick inserts. I'm gonna talk about some of these other guides here in a second, but uh, in hand, you know, I'm a big uh, believer in how it feels in hand is how much you're gonna fish it. This one is awesome. I like that they've got the smooth, a uh, real tightening cap here, you know, it's not threaded. As you all know, I like to finger my line here. So this fits, I can move it back and forth. Nothing uncomfortable there. In hand, um, this Fuji, I forget what it's called. I'll put that in uh, the description and everything, but whatever this is called, this material, it almost feels like a rubbery. I also like in hand how this actually feels. So it's not like a hard plastic or a, you know, a graphite feel to it. It's almost got this like rubbery sort of coating or texture to it. So once you get your hand on it, it does feel really good in hand, feels nice and secure. Okay, so a couple cons on this. For me, number one is gonna be those micro guides. Now, I personally don't care on a lot of my moving baits and things where I'm running straight fluorocarbon, um, but if I were to get into some of these heavier rods where I'm gonna be using braid, I don't love micro guides for my braid stuff. You know, if I'm fishing a frog or some of my topwaters, I prefer a little bit larger, like intermediate guides. I don't really know the guide size, I can't tell you, but I mean, these are some tiny, you can see it compared to my thumb there, you can see those are very tiny little guides uh, on it. And I know if you like to go braid to a leader, um, I personally don't think micro guides are the best for that. So that's kind of one thing. If you don't like micro guides, probably is not gonna be the rod for you. If you go braid to a leader, maybe not. Um, if you go straight fluorocarbon, straight braid in most applications, it should be fine. But always just a heads up whenever I see micro guides, I like to point that out because it seems like people love them. Hate them for the most part. I'm kind of one of those few that's in between, but. Now, another thing is the grip. You know, if you like EVA, I personally like how it's the all black and orange, you know, kind of the same color throughout. They're going to the cork, so it's gonna be that 3A Portuguese, you know, whatever cork it is on them. Um, I don't know, people love cork. People kind of get weird about that stuff, exact grip. I still haven't found one that I'm like completely set on. Like, I always want this. There's some EVA I like, some cork I like, some wind grips. Um, doesn't really matter to me. But again, uh, if you're somebody who really likes the EVA, 
uh, well, they're going to be cork when they put these into like the mass production stuff. So now the last thing is the shipping. I actually just talked to Rick on this because I was like, well, I put one on my cart just to see and shipping was like 25 bucks, but he was nice enough to do a code. So I'll leave that link below. If you pick up any of these, um, he gave me a code for this Debo 25. It's good for 25% off of anything in their store, except for like the monthly subscription stuff. But if you're picking up one of these rods, I was like, dude, I mean like... 25 bucks, that's a lot. So he's talking to, to USPS or whoever it is that's sending these. Um, right now you can get the 25% off, use my code. So super thankful of them to do that because I know who wants to pay that much for shipping, but. So do me a favor, comment below and let me know what you think of these new casting rods. This is a prototype, he's looking for input. So if you have any sort of input for Rick, I'm sure he would love to see it. Um, as soon as this video goes out, I'll let him know. Uh, but I told him I wanted to just give kind of my honest opinion on it. Like I said, I haven't fished it. So this could be something, you know, where they find that, you know, maybe the tip isn't as heavy as it should be or, or whatever, you know. They've had people testing these. I got mine when it's nice and cold, so I haven't actually got to fish it yet. But I've used a number of rods, it feels good, but uh, I definitely want to get it out on the water. Now, today's subscribe fishing friend is Daniel Hedrick. Daniel, thank you for always watching, supporting. He's always commenting. Uh, I appreciate the folks that are OGs, always supporting. We were joking back and forth about uh, lures. I do love watching Forge in the Fire. That's what, on my last video unboxing. Anyway, appreciate you all who continue to watch and support me through all this. It means a ton, but uh, it's late. Gotta edit so we can get this up. Thanks for watching, and until next time.